system is taken out. We're good. Good evening. Welcome to the Monday, June 7th edition of the Board of Selectmen Highway Commissioners and Semi Commissioners meeting. Uh, please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I have anything before I yeah. go? Uh, Mr. Chair, real quick. Um, yes, Mr. Uh, Sullivan. On behalf of the board and town, um, I'd like to make note of passing of Hugh Crawford, Jr. Um, long life, but anybody that's been in town any amount of time knows the generosity of the Crawford family. That's why the name is on the library. They supported the original library, the new library. Uh, just a big name in town. A lot of family members send out our sympathies on behalf of the townspeople. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, now we have the consent agenda. Does any board members wish to pull any item here out of the consent agenda? Mr. Johnson. And do you want to take the executive session minutes off the consent agenda? Yes, as well as the new appointments. Yeah, please, from the new appointments. Yes. So we'll start off with acceptance of minutes of May 17th and May 24th. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Here. Chair, isn't the um, executive session issue over? Oh, we, we're doing them separately. Oh, that's right. That's right. To pull them out. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no worries. Any other discussion? Executive. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Next up, we have the executive session minutes of May 17th, 2021. Mr. Ruta, to release, not to release? Yeah, we can release them, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Chair will accept the motion. That was the MOA for the fire department. Okay. So moved. And second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Next up, we have Dudley Cultural Council, new appointments, Annette and Ronald. Are you here this evening? Yep. Mind coming forward? <clears throat> I'll start with you, Annette. We have, uh, we have your letter here requesting to be appointed to the cultural. the cultural council <clears throat> um would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself um i just retired congratulations thank you um i was firm, formerly employed at saint mary's parish in uxbridge as the director of faith formation I was there for 20 years and um been in Dudley ever since I married my husband 49 years ago. Um, I've done a lot with youth, I've done a lot with, with faith formation. You do a lot with different age groups. Um, I've traveled. I love to travel and um, I love to get people involved. Excellent. Before I ask any board members if they'd like to say anything, I want to thank you for coming forward and offering the volunteer to help the town out. Much appreciated. Anyone? Mr. Chair, um, I haven't known him that 49 years, but I've known him probably 30 years. And the next guy going to be speaking to him in quite a long time. But I echo your, your thoughts. It's nice to see people step up and nice having free time, huh, Annette? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's only been not even a month yet. <laughs> oh, goodness. Gets old, gets old fast. Don't worry, you'll be all set. Anything? Thank you for volunteering. Well, we need the help. I'm looking forward to it, really. Yes, we do. Yeah, anything? You're good. Well, thanks, Annette. Again, thank you for coming forward. You're welcome. Well, the chair will entertain a motion. Since we make a motion to appoint that guy on, Delta Cultural Council, term to expire June, 20, June 30th, 2024. In a second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much, Annette. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I said it. 
Uh, next up, we have Ronald. Ronald, could you tell us a little bit about sure. yourself? <coughs> well, I've been retired a little, little bit longer than that, uh, about, <coughs> about uh, eight years now. <coughs> I was formerly the facilities manager for Fallon Clinic in, in Worcester and St. Vincent's Hospital. And my, my last uh, assignment before retiring was a facilities manager at the Southbridge Hotel and Conference Center. So uh, th that was a that was it was a good a, a, a good life you know it was, it was very interesting uh, but I'm glad I'm retired. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think like most of us, we always uh, maybe not like most of us, but you always look forward to days off, weekends, and then retirement. Well, the retirement's here. <laughs> 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 but uh, but now now I'm finding myself that uh, that I'm I'm looking for community. I'm I'm, I'm looking to 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 do things and meet people. And the only way to meet people is to, to get involved with a committee such as this one. Um, that, that's uh, and, and I, uh, a year ago, I, my wife passed away, so so um, I, I have I really do have a need to to uh, to uh, get to know the community, get to know people, one on one. Well, thank you very much, Ronald, for you know standing up and wanting to volunteer for the town. That's much appreciated. Anything else from the board members? Your facilities position. Yeah. yeah. If you need help with the facility stuff, you know who to call, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, 60 hours or less volunteer. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Chair, make a motion. Point Ronnie Stahalik. Cultural yeah. Council. Term to expire June 30th, 2024. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. Thanks, Thank you. Ron. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for that. Thank you both. Appreciate you guys coming forward. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Uh, next up, although it's not on the agenda, we'll call it 2A. Uh, since we've opened up and we're not wearing masks <coughs> and we're meeting in person, are there any public comments? Mr. Wheelock. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Paul Wheelock. I live on uh, 28 Center Road. And I'm, I have, just have a couple of questions I'd like to ask the board. Um, I'd like to find out, like, uh, what's the protocol in this town, or is there a bylaw in this town for picking up uh, car parts after accident? Because I go down to, to the bottom of the center road where Yummies is and West Main Street, and there's car parts all over the place over there. There's accidents there all the time. So I was just wondering if what's the is, does the town have a policy for getting them picked up or What's the story with that? I would ask the highway fire or police well, Mr. what the, Chair, what the that, protocol is. That stretch of road, state highway? It is. I know in the past we've had problems forever in that intersection. I oh, it's terrible over there. And I, and I wanted to also ask the chief if he had any opinion about, you know, the possibility of maybe putting a light. Because I've been asking the people in the neighborhood, and I think it's time, you know. But I know, Mr. Chair, um, in the past, uh, Highway Department has gone down and used a brush mower to trim back because the state doesn't always get there as often or as quick as we would like. But I'm not sure if we have a bylaw concerning we, picking uh, up. We generally pick most of the big stuff up and we put speed drive down and if it's fluids and we pick it up and put it right back in the car that, that caused the crash or it goes into a bucket on the flatbed. I mean, we probably don't get every piece of, every piece of car part that's on the road, but we usually do clean to 80 to 90 percent of the stuff up ourselves with the tow crew every call we go on. I mean, if stuff gets launched into the woods off the road and we don't see it, then yeah. that could happen too. So right yeah. Okay. So if a bumper comes off, a headlight comes off, gets smashed, it gets swept up and put back in the well, car. We even take brooms out and sweep up oh, the I've smaller seen. stuff. I've seen you. Yeah, and, a tow, and the tow truck companies are supposed to be the ones too picking those things up. Uh, when they when a crash happens, they'll they'll take any any of the sweep when they sweep up after they take the car out there, they'll take any of the broken pieces. That's what they're supposed to do anyway. Um, that's it. That intersection obviously has been a challenge for a long time. Uh, that whole stretch of road actually coming down from the courthouse all the way down to the bottom of the hill. It's been the one thing we've been talking to the state about for the longest time. Uh, they do uh, they do trim the brush and things back there. It was uh, questions about redesigning that intersection anyway because of the flooding that takes place down in that, that section. Uh, if you notice, whenever we get some real heavy rains, the only part that's dry is the very middle of the intersection on West Main Street. Everything else is flooded uh, out about uh, 30 or 40 feet from that spot. So um, 
we have had several discussions with them about that stuff there. Um, and I can, I can make a call to some of our representatives and see what the, the status of that whole thing is. Because uh, I also, too, wanted to look at the, we had another accident over there this weekend, but the uh, Lions Road, Hall Road uh, intersection there, um, there was some, some fixes we had suggested about uh, clearing back some, some of the, uh, the dirt and things in that area to improve visibility. But uh, things have kind of fallen on deaf ears in some way. But I can reach out to the state again and see what, uh, what we can find out. Well, I just want to see all the car parts now, a lot of it's plastic. So it just shatters all over the place over there. So, you know, it, it just looks messy down there. And I, I thought, you know, I would just reach out to the town. Appreciate Thank it. you for your time. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Mr. Wheeler. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have the town administrator's report. Mr. Ruda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so we've got the town meeting is behind us now. And we did a lot of talk about budgeting. That's kind of been the most public discussion we've had in quite some time. So I wanted to talk about a few other things that we've been working on uh, parallel to the getting ready for the town meeting and the budgeting. So it's been a while since we had the Stevens Mill uh, on the agenda. So uh, I thought I'd give you an update and start there. So Camden, the developers for Stevens Mill, uh, has hired a project manager to guide them through the real estate development process and to serve as a liaison with our office, the planning office and the zoning board and the developer. And uh, this is a very positive development for the project as the consultant will serve as the regular li liaison um, between the developer and the town. Uh, the first step that has been taken early in May is that based on our recommendation, um, a positive endorsement and assistance. The project manager has applied for Mass Development's Underutilized Properties Program. And it, that's a program that's designed for projects that will improve, rehabilitate, or redevelop blighted, abandoned, vacant, or underutilized properties uh, to achieve the public purposes of eliminating blight, increasing housing production, supporting economic development projects, and uh, it's specifically a large part of the town strategy for supporting the development of Stevens Mill. Um, and that program I just mentioned is part of the community One Stop for Growth, which is a single application portal which is new. And, and it, it provides for a collaborative review process with community and econo economic development grant programs, and they make targeted investments based on a development strategy. And this process streamlines the process for Dudley and better coordinates programs and staff on the engagement and grant making. And for us, um, the program is pretty important because it changes the role of the state from a passive reviewer of funding requests to an active partner in economic development strategy, priorities, and investment, which is something we've been trying to achieve for quite some time. So that's a positive development um, on the state end of it, positive development locally. Um, and for Camden, the developer, it's important because grant funds <clears throat> may be used for capital improvements that are essential to the occupancy or increased occupancy of the existing structure. And such improvements may address building stabilization, roof repair, HVAC system improvements, provided they are fully integrated elements of the building structure, tenant improvements, and fit out expenses and other similar purposes. And those funds can also be used to facilitate compliance with building codes, fire life safety systems, accessibility requirements, and other similar regulations. So simultaneously to that, with the heaviest lift being done by our town planner, Bill Scanlon, we submitted a proposal for engineering, design, permitting, bidding, and construction services directly related to the Stevens Mill project through MassWorks in the amount initially of 288,000. And this funding uh, will address directly the required municipal infrastructure improvements and George participated in a few of those meetings on behalf of the water and sewer department as well as Jeff. <coughs> um, it'll directly address the required municipal infrastructure improvements around and from the proposed development and offset the sewer and sidewalk deficiencies separately due to expected uh, funding limitations in the Jericho Brandon infrastructure master plan. And we recall that was another grant that we got to begin addressing the area surrounding the mill district. So we're, we're hitting it from both ends at this point. 
So the award announcement for the 288,000 for that initial amount is anticipated to take place in November of this year. The proposal is included in your packets this evening. I only printed one to save some trees, so we'll pass it around. If you're interested in taking a look at it now or at any other point, I can also send that out if you're interested. Um, in addition, we've partnered with Webster to propose a TIF zone, which includes the Stevens Mill property and reaches across the river to underutilized and blighted properties on their side. Um, and that will focus on incentivizing the investment and redevelopment of blighted and underutilized properties on both sides of the river for Dudley. This will make the Stevens Mill project even more attractive for state funding to address critical infrastructure improvement needs. And it will place us in a position that will make the approval of a local uh, residential TIF project by the Commonwealth more attractive. It will also place us uh, in a, uh, a position to give us the ability for uh, the town to begin actually negotiating a TIF with Camden. Um, and to that end, the developer is project manager uh, town administrators, town planners from Webster and Dudley will be meeting with uh, Representative Durant, potentially Senator Fatman in June to discuss the final strategy with gaining <clears throat> the Commonwealth's approval for a TIF uh, for this individual project. And of course, there'll be more to come on that. So finally, in addition to providing the Board of Selectmen with a brief summary of the status of what is now amounted to about a year's work, I want to bring this to the board's attention for several other reasons. First, I want to publicly acknowledge what the board already knows, and that is that this project is not all about gaining a TIF as much as it is about uh, bringing money into town through outside sources to address critical needs and in infrastructure such as sidewalks, street design, sewer infrastructure, and accessibility. And as I mentioned earlier, our first submission for funding um, now that we are properly positioned to request it, is for about 288000 in engineering and design. Second, I wanted to show the savings that comes as a result of the project that the board has stood squarely behind since I first met with the developer. Namely, the cost of sewer infrastructure design engineering will be addressed through state funding rather than through increased sewer rates. And to expand on that, the town will be further eligible once the engineering design project has been funded and completed for alternative sources of funding for construction that will not be borne by the ratepayers. And third, to support the board's authorization for me to invest in my time, the planner's time, town council's time, and to get us to the point now where there's a path forward for the project. In addition to becoming eligible for the initial 288 in design and engineering, the developers hired a project manager specifically to work with the town with its own private money and to work cooperatively with zoning, planning, economic development our legislators so <clears throat> the whole point I'm trying to make here is that we've been answering a lot of questions about whether the initial investment of around 50,000 in legal fees my time the town planners time the board's time staff time was worth it well um, in addition to collecting taxes that were in arrears which already covers the amount of the investment that we've made in our time, we're now in a position where we're eligible for $288,000 in sewer infrastructure improvements. And that's just scratching the surface. So um, it's demonstrably worth what we've put into it so far. And I want to make the board aware of that. Fantastic. Are there questions about it? No, that's pretty. There's also a map included that kind of defines what the proposed TIF district would be across the river, including Stevens Mill. I think we put that in the package then, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. Mr. <coughs> Sullivan. I just want to uh, personally congratulate and thank the administrator. I know Mr. Scanlon is not here. Our, our assistant, George, is here. Everyone that's worked on this, I think, and if nobody takes anything out of what Mr. Ruta just said. Take what he said at the end. We have people questioning why we have council review things like the, the mill conversion. Why would council be reviewing this? Well, as Mr. Ruta stated, just getting the back taxes alone already covered our initial investment. And this is the second big 
uh, grant that we receive for that area over there. And hopefully when all is said and done, the majority of people that pay attention, that care enough to ask the right questions, that don't sit around and be naysayers, will understand the process and how successful it was. So I want to thank everybody involved. Uh, I didn't mention Jeff Murray, I'm sorry, for participating for making this a reality. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Johnson. Uh, the, the crumbling infrastructure in that area is, uh, needs to be addressed. No question. To find uh, ways to get money back from uh, the state would be nice uh, to, to pay for this since we've already sent the money. East, right? This project alone has placed us in a great position to be able to get money back from the state to address the Jericho Brandon neighborhoods and the Mill District itself. And it's given us that two years for design and engineering. So once we've gotten that completed, we submit it for another grant. Now we can start putting money towards construction, including it, you know, taking a look at the intersection down by Dippins, one of Mr. Johnson's favorites. Uh, and it's the parking that uh, on the well, street. Well, uh, right, right, <laughs> and so forth. So we're, we're in a good position to move forward at the early stages where we haven't even begun to talk about negotiating a TIF yet, which really is a very small component of what the town stands to gain by this project. Thank you. Mr. Marcy. Yeah, I mean, first of all, thank you, Jonathan. <clears throat> I mean, we've tried numerous times over the years, everybody, to try to make something that worked for the town overall. And this sounds like something that's what we've been talking about all along, about increasing economic development, partnering with our sister town of Webster to create this one district. If anybody hasn't noticed, Webster, downtown Webster is sort of uh, a lot of stuff is opening there. They've kind of revitalized it, and if that could kind of creep across the French River and, and into Dudley, you know, they'd have some sort of like a, a little canal district maybe. We have the, that, that mill property backs up to waterfront. There's a lot of stuff they could do. So if we look, if you look, look forward into the vision of that, that's extremely exciting. You know, not only from a tax standpoint, access to all that grant money, so it's, uh, that's exciting. And that's exactly what we want to do. That's, that's, when people coming into Dudley to see something nice like that would be fantastic. Great work, everybody. Yes. You know, Mr. Chair, so I remember when I was chairman meeting Mr. Ruda, Michelle, uh, Camden Properties Council was here, Carolyn Murray, and as we're talking about how we're going to go about this application process to even get the grant ball rolling, it looked like it was so far down the road, like I'm never mm -hmm. going to see it. To see it coming to fruition is really, like Mr. Massey said, is really, really something to be proud of. Yes. Well done getting it across the finish line. Everyone that had a part of that. We've got a long way to go, Mr. Chairman, but there's some definite signs of progress. Um, and finally, Mr. Chairman, just to, to stay off the budgeting track for a few minutes and talk about some other projects we've been working on. <clears throat> so, as the board recalls, when I was first appointed, one of my directives was to take a look at e-permitting. I think uh, Mr. Sullivan was the chair at that time, and um, we began that process internally. The staff met with a few different <coughs> consultants, and um, of course, we got derailed by a few events that happened in between now and uh, then and now. But uh, we did manage to keep it on track. We went out in. Uh, and, and got quotes and hired a company back in, uh, I think it was back in December actually, um, called OpenGov. And so we hired them to put together a online permitting system, which is a work has been a work in progress since middle to late January of this year. Uh, we've worked with all internal departments to move toward a um, system that allows for 24-7 online permitting, licensing, uh, and, and other related online benefits. And uh, just to give you an update, I got a little bit lazy and just threw the email into your packets that I received on Friday. And just to, to update on, on the status of that project, uh, the project is on track for late June to go live, possibly earlier. I think it's still going to be late July, but we'll keep that optimism. Um, Dudley is continuing uh, to validate with the, with the assistance of OpenGov. We've 
designed and customized all the permits so that they fit into the, they integrate with the system, uh, <coughs> licenses and so forth. And part of the system is as you fill it out, as you apply, it actually electronically moves itself through each department. And the, and the person who applies for it, um, the business owner, the citizen that applies for it can actually monitor its progress online as it goes through the various departments until it's issued. They can call for inspections and so forth, process payment online. Mr. Jones. Uh, I know a lot of recent cybersecurity work's been done. <clears throat> uh, will all this work be in line with uh, the work that's already done? I, so I, 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 you don't want private individuals putting in a, a permit request and you know have their identity stolen. <laughs> So we've been, we, we right at the beginning stages wrapped our uh, security, cyber security team into this project. All of this is not, none of this is housed on our network. All of this is off site. So um, they're comfortable with this being, uh, this being a valid, safe, secure platform in every step of the way, even before we roll it out, they'll be in, continue to be involved in it. They've been, it's been part of our monthly meeting. Sullivan? You know, Mr. Chair, again, thank Mr. Ruder and everybody that was involved in this. I know it's more than just Jonathan. And again, it just goes to when people think we're not trying to move things forward or they think that we're not trying to make it better, more convenient. We're all residents still. Make it easier and better for the residents. A, a simple phone call, or better yet, now that we're open, you can do it. I hate to use it example but I'm sorry mr. Wheeler came in tonight with a question we have open session I encourage anyone to come in ask the question in person you have the opportunity mm -hmm. every other week fully staffed the, the disinformation and the misinformation that's intentionally put out there frustrates us but I, I congratulate the administrator and our people all our people for keeping their eye on the prize this is another big one it's been in the works through the pandemic maybe it slowed us down a little bit but at the point now, as you just said, I'm going to push it right over the finish line. But just people, just please come in and ask. Glad to give you the answer. As Mr. Marcy says, you can't steer things like a go kart. It needs to be like a battleship. Things don't happen instantly. I was actually go ahead, just, Mr. Marcy. I was just going to say that, like one of the things that I, I, we've learned, we all know this, that um, when I first got here, that was one of the things I, I talked about when I first got here was this. And Jonathan and I work, put our heads together, try to like think about how do we do this. I mean, think of the think of the themes that we've talked about as a board: transparency, you know, accessibility. I mean, think about being able to have that. Mm -hmm. you know, we have the technology to do it. You know, a, a, a platform like this, that which, which I I know other um, other entities that use this, and um, it al allows people to again seeing the status of something online. It's peace of mind. It's ease ease of use. People want to submit something they can do that and uh, um, it's it's so neat to see some of these things come to fruition does it does it is mm -hmm. like turning a battleship like Ms. Zaganovich just said but battleships do turn and here it is so Jonathan and everybody thank you for this everybody this will this this any any type of workflow um, s solution I mean a, a process you first you build a process and then you add technology to it to accelerate it so that's what that's exactly what this is thank you Anything else, Mr. Ritter? Unless there are any questions, Mr. Chairman, I'll say. Any questions? No. Great update, John. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, under new business, we have a toll booth request for the Blessed Backpack Brigade. Is anyone here? She must be feeling very well today. Um, last minute, uh, Michelle's telling me that the uh, Laurie Joseph was scheduled to come in. She wasn't feeling too well, so okay. I, I think this is pretty boilerplate general request that we get every year. They, they've done it before. They know. Yes. They know the expectations. They know to talk with the chief and Mr. Yes, Chairman, Mr. Marcy. I move that we grant the toll booth request for the Blessed Back, Backpack Brigade on Saturday, September fourth, from 2021, from 9 a.m. to noon at the town line. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Johnson. 
Chief, have they already talked to you about this, or? I have not, but I'll, I'll just get in touch with them. I know they've done it before, so. You're comfortable with us moving forward without them? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Anything else? Yeah, do they have a rain date, Michelle? I can no, add to my motion. No, she does not. It's gonna stand out there in the rain. Okay. Well, we can. It's the mailman. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Next up, we have a toll booth request for the Knights of Columbus, number 228, Saturday, October 2nd, from 9 a.m. to noon with a rain date of Saturday, October 9th. Mr. Carmignani. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, looking to bring back the toll booth. I want to say I did the first one in 96, so it's been a while, but I'm pretty sure we can... Uh, we remember how to do it. A lot of the same people are there. Um, Knights of Columbus, uh, good deeds throughout uh, Dudley and Webster. Uh, remember we had the barbecue dinner not too long ago. Those will start up in the fall. Um, good charities, uh, some scholarship money, some money obviously to help the church, but also non-denominational help. Uh, money going to Webster Dudley Veterans Council, uh, St. Vincent de Paul, um, as much as they're affiliated with the church, it's, uh, it's not required to be uh, a, a practicing Catholic to, to get anything from them. So um, just trying to do a couple of good deeds. Um, we'll be respectful. Uh, we'll check with the police, everything like that. And there is a rain date because uh, <coughs> we are sweet. We will melt if we get wet. So. At least the Tootsie Rolls will. Um, there will be Tootsie, Tootsie Rolls, rolls. Uh -huh. um, you know, for those who uh, who need a loose filling. Absolutely. Any questions, Mr. Marcy? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we grant the toll booth request for the Knights of Columbus 228, Saturday, October 2nd, 2021, from 9 a.m. to noon, with a rain date of Saturday, October 9th, 2021. Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Johnson. Same question, Chief. I'm all set. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Next up, host community agreement, 40 Hall Road, Jenna Andrelevich. Okay. Yeah, Chairman, Chairman, members of the board. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Jenna is here. Um, we did send over a draft host community agreement to Mr. Ruder, I believe, a few weeks ago for his review. Um, it's very similar to the two previous ones that we presented to you. Um, it's almost identical to the Fish Road. Um, this would allow the town the full 3% um, of the uh, community impact fee. Additionally, we are proposing a retail establishment here, so the town would also get the 3% sales tax that comes along um, from the state. Um, as well as $10,000 per year in charitable contributions to be discussed with the selectmen prior to those being distributed out to charities in the local area. Um, one of the provisions in there does allow, um, mandates actually, that we have a successful community outreach meeting, which is scheduled for this Wednesday at 6 o'clock at 35 Chase Ave. Um, all the abutters have been uh, put on notice, and we have put it in the newspaper, um, I believe, within the two weeks that is required. So we're asking that um, you consider um, giving us conditional approval based upon a successful meeting happening on Wednesday evening. Thank you. Board members. Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Ruder, I know you had your <coughs> spoke. Just for the record, there was no concerns from council. There was a couple. There was, yep, there was no concerns that weren't corrected and sent out to the board. Those concerns <laughs> were changing the, from uh, um, wholesale to retail that that just basic wording language yeah, yeah. that's what I meant there was no mm -hmm. major no and um, Mr. Chair conditional approval is something we've granted in the past right so that there's no issue with that either no anything good anything Mr. Johnson you good I'm good uh, I just want to touch on one thing you mentioned the charitable contribution I, I just want to make sure we're not mandating that. That's no. something you're doing, free will, goodness of your heart, good community, citizens, what have you. 100%. Um, That's it's not. just something that we're bringing in. Um, we'll take your input, but ultimately, 
Um, that's going to, you know, we're hoping to put it into the Webster, Dudley, Oxford area um, to charities that come through. Um, that's not mandated um, at all because uh, that would be a violation of the CCC regulations. So that is our proposal um, on our own accord. Thank you. Mr. Marcy? Mr. Chairman, um, guys, thank you for this. Um, always like, again, we're, we're on a roll, I think, economic development wise. This is another one in the phase of the other. Um, soon to be successful projects that we have so I am uh, proud to make a motion to provide conditional approval to the host community agreement um, pending a uh, successful community outreach meeting at 40 uh, for 40 Hall Road with the manager being Jenna Andrewevich. We have a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Or none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you guys. Good luck. Yes. It's good to see all your faces. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you laughed when you said that, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> you were on, facing could... forward when you said that. Right? <laughs> Next up on the agenda, we have end of year transfers. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm happy to read this uh, and then maybe a uh, member of the don't want to pull anything out, could make a motion to approve these transfers as I read into the record. I'm doing that because it might be easier for, for me to decipher this sheet than you. Just two copies. Although you, you, Mr. Chairman, you got a sparkle in your eye. I have a sparkle in my eye? Like this is an accounting thing. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Is that just two copies? Of do you want me to read it? Two. I'm happy to do it. If you're happy to do it, go be happy, sir. So we would we would ask for a motion to transfer from account 0001 4205116018100 to account 0001123531002. That's a transfer from highway equipment operator to legal. The next one would be a transfer from the Bay Path line item 0001320565002, the amount of $17,800 to account 0001156525002 to the energy account. The next one would be ITGIS 0001136578402. $2,550. These, these are also going into the energy account that I just read, which is 0001156525002. The next one would be IT maintenance, 0001136578102, the amount of $1,520.29. And finally, from highway, uh, highway equipment operator 0001410511601, 12,000. Now from highway equipment operator 0001420511601, 6,400 to account number 0011755112010. Planner salary. And then from heavy equipment operator 0001420511601, to account 0011755700002 to planner expenses. And that, again, is the amount of $500 for a total amount of $48,870.29 in transfers. This will be the first of uh, ongoing year in transfers. Mr. Marcy. Mr. Mr. Chairman, through the Chair, Jonathan, um, I noticed off the top it mentions FAA Reserve. We're not using this for that, this purpose. We haven't needed to use that. We haven't needed to. Okay. I, I, I move that we allow the transfers, uh, year end transfers, um, from the accounts Jonathan mentioned to the accounts Jonathan mentioned, in the total of $48,870.29. Second, for discussion. What Go ahead. If, what if we had more questions before we move the vote? If there was more questions before we move the vote. On this? What the original? Well, you can handle it during discussion, I guess. 
Well, I thought we were doing, oh, you, did you want initial motions for each of those? Is that what you mean, Mrs. Holden? Well, I thought we'd do it all at once. Oh, okay. And then we could discuss. That's oh, okay. Why I went the whole thing. Let me do the questions before. That's all right. Just oh. ask the question. I'm happy to answer. No, <laughs> nice job. Okay. Motion in a second. Steven. Any further discussion? It's just normal cleanup. This is end of the year cleanup, particularly this year, Mr. Johnson, because we had <clears throat> obviously the issues we dealt with over the past year with the budget, but we also had a new highway superintendent hired during the fiscal year. We had a foreman promoted who used to be a heavy equipment operator, so those budgets have surpluses and some other budgets needed to be shored up. So we're going to probably do this every meeting through middle July until oh. we've made everything balanced. Everyone's good? Mm -hmm. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Next up, board members' comments. Which word says the food, by the way? Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Chair, um, very brief. Just want to uh, congratulate Shepherd Hill. Successful graduation. Thank the town administrator for representing the board. And we don't no longer have a student rep for the next fall, but wish them all well, whatever their endeavors take them. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Johnson. I uh, just want to remind everybody, uh, shameless plug for the Troop 273 yard sale this coming Saturday. Uh, early bird at 8 a.m. for a small fee, 9 a.m. to the general public, Ooh, usually running into the, uh, into the afternoon. Where's that located? That's on Hall Road across from the courthouse. I'm really glad that's finally happening, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, a lot of people are clamoring yes, for it's, it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's <laughs> a great fundraiser for uh, the troop, and you know, should be a good pick and stuff. My, 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 low, my disc in my back. <laughs> <laughs> Just have to be quiet. Own your traffic shifting skills. Be kind to the people in the street directing traffic. <laughs> Mr. Marcy. No, I just had one thing. I actually echo Mr. Sullivan. I was uh, at the Shepherd Hill graduation at the DCU Center uh, to watch my son Anthony graduate among a bunch of other uh, kids that I've watched grow up from uh, little kids and it was uh, in quite in such a big building and seeing them on the Jumbotron when they did it and this class has had such uh, uh, you know a trying year and, and I think Superintendent LaMarche mentioned like or uh, and Chaplin and, and the, ch the, the chairman Lafayette of the uh, school committee all mentioned like this class had to mature quicker than than other classes and uh, I think they were right and it was su such a great production and uh, I hope that they do that every year now just to see uh, to see your kid up on the on the jumbotron is something else so it was pretty neat and uh, congratulations to all the graduates so, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Marcy. Um, uh, since our last meeting, we had candidates night, and I wanted to thank each and every candidate that showed up <coughs> that night to be basically put themselves out there, kind of like being put in a fishbowl, which is kind of like what being an elected official is. You're in a fishbowl, you know, constant observation, uh, people always just keeping an eye on you and uh, and I know that's difficult for some people some of them some of them that was their first time up speaking alone by themselves they were they were the focus and I mean really would, would you hire someone for a job if they didn't show up to the interview of course not uh, interviews are difficult though it's there they was the the town moderator Chris Darcheski he put together some nice questions there was the opportunity from people from the audience to ask questions it was a great way for people to get to know who to vote for because you really don't know you see the sign you might see the person but do you know where they stand do you know what experience they have do you know anything about them that was your your night to get an opportunity to learn more about them um, and it is on YouTube I encourage everyone that's a voter if you haven't seen it if you weren't here for it go onto the town's YouTube page and watch it I 
and again, I, I really credit them for, again, jumping in the fishbowl because some people want to get involved and others just want to tap on the glass. So once again, thank you all for showing up that did. Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, too, sorry, uh, show up Monday to vote. Mm -hmm. I said it before, I'll say it again. I'm on the ballot. I'd rather have a thousand people show up and lose than one person show up and I win. So crank up the vote. Get involved. You said it eloquently. Ditto, Mr. Chair. Mr. S through uh, Mr. Chair to Mr. Sullivan. I was taking a dramatic pause before I said that, but you know, oh. you're, you're fine. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Johnson? <laughs> no. <laughs> Next up, departmental communications. Mr. Murray, you're the closest to my line of sight, so. Highway uh, informing me of uh, the necessity to close down the bridge on Brandon Road over um, Mill Race. It's the dry uh, dry stream bed just before the uh, bridge that passes over the French River. Um, so I had some discussion with him about that. They uh, followed up with a letter. Uh, if you'd like, I can read the letter. It's uh, Dear Select Board, uh, the Massachusetts Department of uh, Transportation. Highway Division has undertaken inventory inspection and rating of municipal bridges to assist the cities and towns in complying with the state and federal laws and regulations in accordance with the provision of Mass General Laws Section uh, Chapter 85, Subsection 35. Uh, Mass DOT Highway Division has determined the maximum load which subject bridge may safely carry. The above bridge was rated and it is recommended that the bridge be closed uh, to vehicular traffic. The reason for the recommendation is due to very low inventory numbers for the flexural strength of interior beam number three at mid-span, which is below three tons. Mm. Um, this letter confirms the notification of the bridge uh, to, the, to close the bridge per telephone conversation on 5-27-21 between Mass DOT's District 3 bridge engineer, Mohammed Nabulsi, and Jeffrey Murray, Dudley's Highway su Superintendent. Your immediate action is requested. Please respond in writing confirming your action no later than June 11, 2021. Copy of the rating report uh, regarding the recommendation is on file in our district office. Yeah. Barry Lorian, the district highway director, will be pleased to review the report with you and advise you of any programs available regarding the bridge. Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, Patricia Leavenworth, PE chief engineer. Um, so regarding this, uh, I uh, made notification to the uh, both chiefs, the uh, police and fire, as well as the town administrator. Um, I've since spoken with the uh, highway superintendent Webster, which uh, they seem to have more impact, being that uh, they have sludge that's hauled out of their treatment plant directly adjacent to the the bridge crossing, so it would impact them as well as us. Um, further, I've reached out. Um, to the uh, mass, mass DOT again to ask that they uh, take a larger role as, as far as uh, helping to close down the bridge and uh, work on the detail, detour plan. Again, I've spoken with both the police and fire chief uh, who wanted to uh, be involved in that process, but I, I think uh, the fact that this impacts Webster as much, if not more, uh, as Dudley, that uh, Mass DOT should uh, have a have a pretty substantial role in that uh, being that you know we I don't want to be directing Webster what they they should be doing certainly we've been in communication back and forth uh, uh, with the superintendent but um, you know their mass DOT is supposed to be uh, drafting a, a signage plan and getting that over to us our, our um, one of uh, Mohammed's uh, associates I've spoken with on the phone, and she's supposed to be forwarding that plan. So, um, I will either draft a uh, a letter and forward to the uh, selectmen, or you know, if they if they so choose, they can you can uh, put a letter together addressing the closure of the bridge, um, and they're expecting that by Friday. So, again, it's up uh, at the board's discretion what. What you'd like to do it again? If you'd like, I can. I'll put a letter together addressing the issue and and uh, send the draft to the board, and then they can make any 
of their own uh, recommendations, amplifications, or whatever to the to the letter. Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Ruda. just to add <coughs> add to uh, Mr. Murray's comments, I spoke to Doug Willits and the TA and mm -hmm. Webster, and they're very concerned about this closure. Um, Jeff has done a great job reaching out directly to the DPW director, and they're working cooperatively. And both towns have agreed that we'll move forward and, and respond, uh, and pro should probably include this into the letter back to Mass DOT when both t both towns are on the same page to make sure that the you know Webster and Dudley are both being properly served by Mass DOT. So my suggestion is if if we're going to respond in writing to Mass DOT. And acknowledge this letter. We should say that, as part of our request to Mastodt, we want to make sure that <coughs> because it impacts both towns, mm. we're on the same page uh, before we agree to any closure. That would pretty much close down Hill Street, right? That's a, a sewer processing plant is right yeah. there. That's a major problem. Yeah. So yeah, again, uh, Webster has some great great concern uh, for for Dudley. You know, it's a matter of convenience. It would, uh, you know, people that use that as cut off to uh, get over to exit one, one 395. Uh, you know, it's, it's a shortcut uh, for, again, for Webster. They they haul sludge with trailers out of their plant. So for them to pull out of the plant and have to uh, negotiate Hill Street and then uh, somehow get onto uh, School Street from there it would be rather difficult. They contract with they contract with a private hauler to do this. So. Emergency vehicles too, right? And emergency vehicles, but uh, I mean, I think there's a logical uh, rerouting plan, a detour plan that we can come up with. I've, again, I've spoken with uh, police chief. Um, seems like Chase Ave is a pretty, pretty suitable de detour, and uh, we have recently paved Lower Perryville Road. It's a little, little bit out of the way, but it it reroutes traffic uh, rather than going through. <clears throat> Um, directly through Webster Center up over to uh, School Street. I, I feel like a good chunk of my childhood, the other French River Bridge was closed, the one by the railroad tracks by Cemetery Road. Mm -hmm. That was closed for, it seemed like, forever. Mr. Marcy? Yeah, no, Jeff, thanks for bringing this to us. Um, whatever we decide, I love the fact that we, you know, Dudley and Webster will be on the same page, but when this, if, if this becomes a reality and they're just going to close it, this needs to be posted everywhere, you know, every, everywhere. I mean, so people are aware that this is happening and this isn't something that we just decided to close it one day. So it's the state, you know, doing this. And if they close it, they're going to fix it. Uh, I would have to agree. And that's, again, that's what my conversation has been yeah. with them. You know, I, again, I received the phone call and it was basically pretty blase. You know, you you need to close this bridge. and. I've kind of put it back at them that, you know, I think they need to take a larger role and uh, it needs to be communicated that it's their decision that it needs to be closed. Uh, they need to provide us the help with doing that signage plan, rerouting plan, or detour plan, um, and then also addressing the concerns of uh, our neighbor, neighbors in Webster. Yeah, right. I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, yeah, we care about safety. We want the public safety is number one. We all say that, right? But. When you get a letter that says, "Hey, we're going to close your bridge," you know, it's they, yeah, they should sure. help out a little bit with that. And they, and Perfect. and also, uh, you know, the other thing we need to know if, you know, they've completely right. exhausted alternative plans, or, you know, if there's some other way that it can be used. So. Right, M Mr. Johnson, did you have something? Two questions. Uh, we might not be bridge experts. Do we agree there's a safety issue? I'm sorry. Do we agree that there is a safety issue with that bridge? That's what. Mastod is telling us that the, the uh, center span beam has uh, been rated at th less than three ton. So they're they're calling it uh, an imminent failure hazard. All right. So go back to my question. Do we agree with that assertion? Yes. Okay. Um, so if we if we agree that it's a, a safety issue, is that that comes before anything else, right? Touched upon it, Mr. Nasik, but it did. No, so we need to uh, tell people. We need to tell people immediately and get get it taken care of. Six thousand pounds and a truckload of sludge going across it. I mean, six thousand pounds. That's what's that? A three-quarter ton truck with maybe a load of mulch in the back. 
I don't know my. I, uh, so again, the uh, a, a brief conversation with one of the uh, bridge engineers. It, this is the center span beam. So the uh, the load carrying beams on the outside that you know with the with the truck traffic, um, you know, it certainly sounds like uh, you know it's the the bridge isn't going to uh, you know come down or fail under a under a load on those on those beams, but you know you can't really control what happens when they've derated the center the center span so you know there is there is some degree of concern there so mr Johnson to the there's a lot of talk about sending it back down down Schofield is there an exit from the the plant to uh, chase and then out nope. that I no no so this this is uh, would be a direct closure from Chase Ave to the other side of the uh, bridge crossing over the the French River, directly at the uh, the opening to the uh, Webster treatment plant. Okay. Up and down the street. Wow. Anything else? Mm -hmm. in the back room? I'm glad we know about it now. No, that whichever way you look at it, it's a tight turn. Well, Mr. Chair, it's similar to West Dudley, what eight or ten years ago. All of a sudden, the state walked in and said. Shut it down. I, I, I agree, oh, yeah. Mr. Chairman. I think there's a much more, there's a bigger impact with this, though. Oh, no, I agree. It was the same set of circumstances. So we've got, we're up against the safety issue and we're up against the logistical the, issue. Yeah. The biggest so, impact is if the bridge fails and someone's right. on it. That's the biggest. That's bigger than any, in my opinion, I think Mr. Johnson would agree, judging by, and forgive me if I'm overstepping, but. I, I think it's more important to keep people from falling through a bridge than to worrying about traffic. What are your thoughts? On I, I would have to agree. So um, I have been exploring other alternatives, or you know, any any alternative that may be out there. That again, this is the dry, this is the dry stream bed crossing. I don't know if that uh, was installed as a diversion uh, for flood, or if it was uh, some sort of tributary that fed fed the mill. Again, the the, the name is mill mill race so so you're already thinking about uh, alternatives fill it uh, you know correct and i don't know if that's an alternative but it's, it's worth exploring and i because i i don't expect that there's uh any immediate resolve to this and i'm sure as the board well knows um anything dealing with the state when you start talking about bridges or bridge replacement this is um you know i asked about initially uh, any type of repair or grant programs as far as that's concerned because of the rating of the bridge repair is not an option it would be a full full bore replacement so you know which, if which that is, gets if that gets out to uh, you know funding discussions design and you know we're talking a two two or three year process uh, with that in all likelihood and then you know at a minimum so that's it'll be a lengthy process Perryville was closed for oh. the first eight years I moved to town. So what? When I first voted to reopen it. What are you looking for us to do now? I guess. Is well, I think one, uh, we need to respond as uh, as the letter states. They're expecting a response from us by the uh, okay by Friday. So. so so it's not close it right now this second. They're not there. Uh, they're. They're asking for a response, so I think they, you know, they, again, the conversations I've had with them are, you know, they would like us to put some sort of temporary temporary closure there in place. I'm somewhat, you know, I understand the safety issues, but I'm, I also understand the logistics and the impact on another community. So, you know, I'm asking that they be involved in that process, and it sounds like they, they are. They're they're developing a signage plan, and working with us so I you know I'd like to hang on to that with uh, with them being being involved or having a larger role like I said mr. Sullivan mr. chair since we don't meet again before Friday that would be appropriate to just give a motion between the highway superintendent the administrator and yourself respond in writing by the deadline you don't have to come back to the board for edits and corrections I don't think between the three is Jeff's been dealing with it. Jonathan's aware of it. We're aware of it now. Yeah. 
think between the three again, if the if the board <coughs> is uh, satisfied with that, uh, because I've been involved with the day to day with this, again, I could draft a letter. I'd uh, forward that to the board and uh, Mr. Ruder, and then uh, with the board's approval, you know, they could they could review that individually, and you know, uh, however that you know, I don't know if I don't know if it would uh, require um, the board members to come in and come in and sign that, or you know, how how you would want to handle it, or if you just want to give Mr. Ruder the uh, or myself the um, ability to do that on upon approval of the letter. I like your idea there. Yeah, I trust. I trust. Jeff hasn't let us down yet, and I trust that he's going to do well. And Mr. Ruder and you, yep, oversight. And That's it. You can just put it through. Give it to Mr. Ruder. Okay. I'll have a look, and then pow. Okay. Very good. Um, good plan, everyone. Yeah. Yep. Motion, or vote necessary, just unanimous consent. <coughs> yeah, as Mr. Joseph would say. <coughs> you know, and I agree, Mr. Massey. Got to get the message out there, but the message has to include this is not Webster telling us to close the bridge, it's not us telling Webster to close the bridge, it's the state telling us right. the bridge is in dire need. It's not, then people can call us all they want, nothing we can do. I think it would be wise to come across as a uh, mass thought directive. That's uh, publicly. Uh, that's that's made public. That uh, you know there. Put out on Twitter, the Facebook. Page. School bus crossing that bridge, huh? Mr. Johnson. Uh, so as soon as the letters are agree agreed to, we need to get it on the. Uh, on the, the website, on the um, the sign out front. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you get Facebook agree on sign, you just got to get out onto uh, onto the roads. People that use that every day. The sooner they know, the better off they are. Through the chair, Jeff, was this this was subsequent to the regular inspection? Is that how this came about? Correct. So just to reiterate, they, the the state comes and inspects our bridges. Mm -hmm. We don't inspect them. The state comes and inspects them. Subsequent to that inspection, this is the report we got. Well, Mr. Johnson said we're not bridge experts, so right. They yeah, trust so the experts. We could have done differently. And, and likewise, there are there are other bridges in town or in the area. So, you know, something like this can literally drop out of the sky on us at, at any time. So, yeah, I just don't want I just don't want it to come across like we're passing the buck or anything because this is this is we do care about public safety, number one. No can to be kicked here. Okay, here's Mr. Johnson. No can, Mr. Johnson. I'm trying to get. I know, no well no no peripheral yep. vision and glasses. You should you should know. I understand the rules of the game now. I'm moving forward. Thank you. Uh, so we got a report on one bridge. I'm guessing the state didn't drive all the way to Dudley and inspect one bridge, right? Correct. Any uh, comments from them about any other bridges? Sure. We uh, actually received uh, about the same time a, uh, a condition report on the three bridges on Lower Perryville and uh, Perryville Road at the same time, and those are about 10 years old, 10 or 11 years old, so pretty good condition. My, you know, some minor uh, uh, condition report or uh, condition issues that uh, you know that next to next to non-existent. Um, so uh, a couple of other items uh, where we have been doing some paving projects. So um, again. Lower Perryville Road was done uh, about a month ago. Uh, Eagle Eagle Drive and uh, um, Rocky Hill. Rocky Hill were were paved uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then to, just today uh, we paved about roughly two thirds of a mile of uh, over um, between Hayden Pond Road and Ramson Road, Road on Corbin, so the west section of Corbin Road. Um, so, and uh, it's about roughly half of uh, half of what we have on the uh, agenda for this year for paving that we've put out so far. So, Excellent. maintenance issues as far as uh, you know, we're out mowing mowing shoulders. Uh, you know, uh, have uh, guys out doing you know routine routine maintenance with um, mowing and whatnot with uh, cemeteries and. 
rest of the roadways patching potholes. So that's about it. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Fantastic Thank update. Well, could have been better news, but it was yeah. it was detailed. No, Thank I feel, you. I feel fantastic update. I feel informed. <laughs> fantastic. I feel informed. I know, and that's good. It's that's just good. they came out as. George, do you have anything, sir? No? Okay. No, 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 you're not. Um, Mason Road Project's coming along very nicely. It's pretty quick. Uh, we haven't had any real complaints over there of any public issues. Um, sometimes there's been some little washouts here and there where we've taken care of them in-house just to keep the road safe. Um, so they're going to be uh, buttoning that up in no time and then moving down to the bottom side and working their way up. I mean, you've probably seen the sign at the bottom of uh, Mason Road uh, by the fire station. I don't know my name's not on it, but that's all right. Um, the other thing is the blending has come back for the third time in the quarter at the 13 level out of 20. So now we're, 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 yeah, we're way under. And we're going to start asking DEP now to move our station pumpage up higher at well number seven. And since that's the new well, it seems surprisingly that it has come down a few points considering the old well was right near it, right next door to it. Um, but we've been lucky. It's been keeping around 18. So it blends with the other station. And that's where we're at with that. So hopefully we can maybe squeak by a little bit in this hot weather. But I'm still crossing my fingers. So we'll see how we do. Thank you, Thank you George. Also fantastic. Yes, that was a fantastic update. Less than 20. Police Chief, do you have anything, sir? You're shooting for a fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just uh, <laughs> a couple you know, things. The bar said it fantastic, Chief. Was that? The bar said it fantastic. Oh, well, I'll, I'll try to be lame then. Uh, I guess like, we had a pretty busy Success. weekend just because of the, uh, I think people probably were taking advantage of the, uh, uh, the rain and the cold and staying in for Memorial Day and then decided to stretch their legs this weekend so it got pretty busy. But one issue that we, uh, we dealt with was uh, <coughs> down at the, uh, at the parking lot by the Mason Road School for the beach. So I spoke to uh, John today and the uh, highway superintendent. So we're going to get the signage up there about the resident uh, only parking and things. The beach isn't, isn't going to be officially open until July 1st. So we're going to kind of patrol and deal with the issues that, uh, that we can. But uh, just trying to eliminate the problem uh, before it gets gets going more so especially if we have more warm weather i'm sure it's going to be getting more use so just in case you hear anything about that that's just what we'll be doing all right that's hey, it you sent out the report about green street was that an isolated incident uh, there was a car break over there is it something to worry about uh, i think it was well we were able to locate the person that did it uh, we didn't get a lot of other reports uh, of similar activity so uh, but we always tell people make sure you lock your cars that is one of the biggest things that that goes out there people have been checking cars and if they're unlocked, they'll get in and take things out of it. Um, and uh, also to make sure that you, especially a lot of cars that have the, uh, the keyless ignition now, make sure you do not leave your fob inside the car. That's a bad thing. Uh, so if uh, try to take those with you and secure your vehicles up. A lot of people have a little more sense of uh, security at their, at their home thinking it's not going to get bothered, but that's what will be happening at time to time. So <coughs> just make sure we tell people to do all that stuff. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Fantastic. Rich, do you have anything? <clears throat> Bring your paper up. I'm sorry. We're going from fantastic to lame to maybe I'll get a yawn out of Mr. Johnson. Who knows? So this starts strong. We're going to just yawn you right off. So the Hampshire Council of Governments Group Insurance Trust uh, Executive <coughs> Committee voted $25 uh, for the subscriber if you prove that you've gotten the, vac uh, the vaccination. It's not for the whole family, subscriber only, the thought being the $25 CVS gift card. Uh, all those vaccinations would more than offset even just one. Everybody remembers uh, there's no cost to anything COVID as far as insurance goes. Federal government takes care of it. We're an insurance trust, which means we need to pay for it. So prevention, prevention, prevention. Also May is, uh, we just ended it mental health um, month. Uh, so along those lines, the renewal is 7-1. We just closed open enrollment. You are going to, all the subscribers are going to get a second card. You have that blue cross card that has the enrollment number 
There is going to be a second card. They have gone through a separate prescription drug service, so CVS Caremark, instead of having a Blue Cross card. Uh, there's a lot of back office things that the trust did to save money, um, and we've done those things. Uh, property and casualty as of 7-1, it's going to be a new agent, but one of the carriers will remain the same. The IOD coverage is going to remain the same, but it's going to be a different worker's compensation. Property and casualty is going to be different. It's Maya. Uh, so there are going to be some loss forms that, are need, that need to be updated. Along those lines, the McNamara bill, uh, half a million dollars, what, 12 years ago, volunteer public safety. Each year there's an increment uh, adjustment. If you're a volunteer public safety uh, firefighter, you go into a building and absolutely the worst thing happens. Your family and loved ones are indemnified. So we've changed the coverage, incorporated it into um, this new bid. So we've saved some money, uh, still have Boston Mutual for other items. Uh, along those lines, Maya was brought in sort of as a fresh face, there's going to be a little bit more loss control, opportunity for some online training. Uh, now that things are changing, we're going to have access to um, skid school and all of those other in-person trainings. I can't imagine a heavy summer rollout. I would imagine with all the vacations and everything, beginning in the fall, we're going to be able to get those people going. Uh, your EAP is also going to change the employee assistance program, uh, something that I think has saved a lot of people some grief. Uh, as far as budget, I know Mr. Ruda was looking to avoid this. We did save some money, uh, about $30,000. Uh, the way this insurance works, we're, there's some year one savings, uh, but the more we participate in loss prevention, the more we don't file claims, more money the second year, third year, and fourth year. It's almost like a mutual. Um, remember, these are the people we brought in last September. Uh, they didn't bid last year, but they were brought in for some active loss control. We've gotten some policies and what have you. Uh, as far as the water and sewer projects, I know I'm stealing George's thunder. Remember, we had that grant. There was a grant for PFAS engineering for 177.5, that paperwork has been filed. Uh, the state revolving fund, we have the water I and I, uh, excuse me, the sewer I and I, and the West Means, uh, excuse me, the Mason Road project. All of that paperwork is done electronically, so that's moving along. We are going through and doing all of the town meeting articles from the town meeting. We're going to do all the compliance for those. Uh, the SAM.gov, the System for Award Management, all of the FEMA money, Grants.gov. Uh, there's, a, there's 101 spams that go out and say, you need to go through and update your DUNS, nu DUNS number, cage code, things like that. I'm telling you right now, I've gone through and I've done it. Uh, so anytime you see those, it's, they're looking for a pass through to get part of it and it's free to, to update and we already updated it. Um, and on a somber note, uh, Ed Mickelson passed from, uh, he was on the FAA Marine. My goodness, we, we're losing a lot of Marines lately. Um, good time on the FAA, wonderful car guy, uh, good person to talk to. So he tended on a somber note, but he was a good guy. So thank you. Thank you, Rich. My fellow Mr. Terry, Mr. Mickelson, he was also on the Housing Authority for a number of years. Yes, he was. Oh, good man. He I'm was. We'll miss him. Oh, I'm miss it. Thanks for bringing that up, Rich. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, next up, we have adjournment into executive. Mr. Marcy. Mr. Chairman, I move that we convene into executive session under Mass General Law. No Auction. executive tonight. Huh? Uh, we, we had a reschedule for the executive, so oh. we, we, are, we are free to go. Oh, oh. no, Well, second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Sorry. Good everybody. night, everyone. All right. Good night, everybody. Vote, vote, vote. Yeah.